All right, let's start that over. Hi, I'm Drew. I work on W Roots with these guys. Um, so what you see here is uh, our Wayland compositor. It's called Sway. Uh, if you're familiar with the i3 uh, x11 window manager, uh, Sway is very much like it. It uh, is a drop-in replacement for i3. And as part of this project, we have built a library called WR Roots which we, uh, we use to provide the basis of what's now 10 Wayland compositors that uh, all share the code that does some common things like DR DRM and KMS. It's kind of like an alternative to LibWeston. And so one of the initiatives we have is to, um, to listen to what users are missing from Wayland, things that they're used to on X and things they might want to use on Wayland before they switch. And this is particularly important for Sway, which is really a power user tool that encourages users to, to build their desktop out of their own customized components that behaves in any way they wish. And prior to Sway's entry on the scene and our work with WR Roots, the, the sort of convention was that the compositor will take care of it by building its own desktop shell. So Weston has its own desktop shell, which uses some private non-standardized Wayland protocols for building desktop shell components. Uh, GNOME does something similar by running the GNOME shell in its own process, um, which is also using proprietary Wayland protocols along with some black magic. And KDE was doing something very similar. And at first, so was Sway, but one of the pieces of feedback we kept getting from the community is that a lot of the things they were used to were broken. So things like uh, tools like DMenu or Rofi or tools for doing screen capture like Open Broadcast Studio, things like these were deliberately not supported by Wayland because they presented a security risk. But we, uh, we promised to, to attempt to rectify this by building standard protocols that would be used, usable on multiple compositors. And our sort of flagship protocol, the one that I think is the most important, is the layer shell. And I would like to show it to you today. So for those unaware, the concept of shells on Wayland is what imbues surfaces with meaning. So a surface is just a rectangular box of pixels which a Wayland compositor can display. But without a role, it uh, will never display this surface. A role tells the compositor what kind of surface it is. So that surface might be an application window, it might be your desktop wallpaper, or your taskbar, or any number of other kinds of surfaces. But each one of those is treated differently and has different semantics about how you interact with it. For example, an application window you might want to show in some sort of taskbar. It might have a title. It might have minimize and maximize capabilities, whereas your wallpaper naturally doesn't. And so the sort of standard shell, the one that most people use for application windows, is called XDG shell. And it's not suitable for building desktop components with. But layer shell is. So I have here our example client. For many of the protocols that WL Roots works with, and uh, several of the protocols in the upstream Wayland protocols repository, we've built demo clients which are useful to people hoping to implement compositors or understand the client code for these protocols. So this layer shell example is that for the layer shell. So if I run this with uh, no arguments, it doesn't do much. But if I move this window out of the way, we can see the example program running here on the desktop. And so the basic tenet of the layer shell is that it organizes windows into layers. And there are four of these layers. There's the background layer, the bottom layer, the top layer, and the overlay layer. And application windows are shown in between the bottom and top layers. The client can specify which layer it wants to be shown in. And the compositor will do its best to put the client or put the surface in that layer. So in this case, the default layer is the background layer, which is why this shows up underneath the application window. But if I were to invoke this with the layer option, I can specify the top layer, which will then show it on top of application windows. And so this is the basic concept, is that you're able to control the Z order of your window. And this is useful for a wide variety of applications. For the, the first example, you might use that to build some sort of wallpaper application. And for the second example, you might use that to build some kind of application launcher, which pops up on top of the, uh, on top of the UI. But it can do a lot more than that. So another option we can use, for example, is the anchor option. So I can say anchor on the left. And it will anchor it to the left side of the screen. Or I can say anchor it on the left and on the top. And we might see this used, for example, by something like a, um, a notification. And we can also say, perhaps, anchor on the top left and right. 
and now we have something which might be more akin to the Unity panel, or we could anchor it to the top left and bottom. Ah, it doesn't make sense. Point is, you can anchor these to the edges. You can also allow the compositor to make some choices. So I could say anchor to the, to the top, anchor to the left, and anchor to the right. And I can also specify the width and height of my surface. So for the width, I'm going to set it to negative one. And for the height, I'll set it to 40. And so when I set one of these dimensions to negative one, I have to also specify these anchors. And when I do this, we sake fault. <laughs> Is this supposed to be zero, perhaps? Yeah, that's more like it. So if you, if you don't specify one of these dimensions, the compositor assigns it for you. So one of the intentional design decisions of Wayland is that the output geometry is unknown to the clients. So your output might be a projector like this, or your output might be something more novel. It might be some kind of circular display which is being shown on some kind of billboard, or it could be a VR scene where there's no display at all. And these sorts of semantics are not conveyed to the application but some applications still need to stretch across the screen to be, for example, some kind of taskbar. And that's where this comes in play. If you don't specify one of your dimensions and you have specified anchors, we'll assign one for you. And so with this, layer shell becomes useful for taskbars and a variety of other applications. One example might be dmenu. So if I want to run something, I can, I can specify this sort of drop-down menu. There are also applications like drop-down terminals like wake or yakuke. I'm not sure how to pronounce that but drop-down terminals, which can come from the top of the screen. So with this, more and more of these applications users are used to on X11 continue to become possible on Wayland. And we can do some more stuff, too. If anybody has done desktop programming or made a desktop shell for X, you're probably familiar with the idea of struts. So if I were to specify a strut, um, that doesn't work here. But I can specify what we like to call an exclusive zone. So my panel is 40 pixels tall, so if I specify an exclusive zone of 40 pixels, you'll notice that my other panel, the one that just comes with sway, was moved down the screen a little bit. And now if I unmaximize, or if I, un if I maximize this application window, you'll see it's been told not to occlude the layer. And so you can use this to, uh, for example, make sure that maximize windows aren't covering your taskbar, or that your taskbar isn't covering maximize windows. And so with all of these components combined, you're able to build a whole lot of interesting applications. We're also able to specify a couple of other things like the input semantics, so you can specify whether or not your surface will receive um, pointer events, and if it doesn't, they'll just pass through it. You can also request whether or not you want to receive keyboard events. So within Sway, as first party layer shell clients, we've built uh, a lock screen, a panel, a wallpaper, and a notification bar that shows up if you have errors in your config file. And all of those applications work on any compositor that implements this protocol, which is right now the 10 compositors which use WL roots, although actual support for this particular protocol varies. They need to do some work in order to opt into it. But in theory, it works on all of them. And it would also work on any other compositors that implement our protocol. We're um, trying to hold discussions to, to standardize this protocol. Um, and bring it up into Wayland protocols proper. And with that, we'll, we'll have access to a lot more interesting use cases. So other things we already see in the wild are like, um, there's a notification daemon written by Simon here. Uh, we also have by Simon a, uh, an overlay which lets you do a sort of selection of part of the screen to take a screenshot of. Um, there are numerous third party panels that are under development. Uh, there's one in particular which is pretty cool that kind of behaves like, um, uh, it's called Yellow Bar or something. But there are a number of clients that are coming out now which are using this protocol, and it answers one of the biggest concerns that our users have had about moving from X11 to Wayland. And I think that addressing these concerns seriously instead of just shrugging them off as possible security problems is important. And security is important, but we also think that a desktop which doesn't work is a desktop which is not going to get used, and security doesn't matter if nobody's using it doesn't mean we're not taking it seriously. It's an open question of how we do these, and we have some of how we deal with security, and we have some ideas, but we feel that it's more important to have a working desktop before we try to secure it. So that's the idea of Layer Shell. 
Uh, are there any questions I can answer? Any question? Okay, thanks for your attention.